All right, today we're gonna to be checking out a product called Codacy, which is supposed to automate your code reviews on your commits and pull requests. So what does that mean exactly? So they've got a little demo here. I just kind of want like a brief picture. So actually we'll just kind of take a look. So 30 supported languages, which is awesome. So trying to figure out exactly what it means. So check your code quality and keep track of technical debt. Okay, so code quality is what it sounds like it does. Uh, so it's interesting. I wonder how this compares to something like, let's say if you have Prettier or ESLint installed in a JavaScript project and you have part of your CI checks to make sure that all of that passes. And if it doesn't, then you could block merging of a pull request. So I wonder, okay, that's kind of cool. So, I mean, this is kind of, I mean, at least in the JavaScript world, it sounds like, but this is pretty similar to like things that TypeScript might catch where it's like, hey, you defined that, but never used it. And you'll get those red or green squigglies in your editor. So push result as comments in your pull request or as notification. So you add it to a repository, it'll detect issues and then you get notified. Okay, cool, cool. I guess I just wonder, yeah, you know, what's, we'll have to dig in and see how this differs from like a prettier ESLint. Give visibility into your code quality, um, the actual health of your projects. So this is interesting. Oops. Especially, especially in the world of open source, you know, having some sort of metric or way to measure the health of your project. Now that, that's in. So in the cloud or behind your firewall. Okay. So they'll host it or you can self host. That's cool. Um, all right. So a lot of companies. Deliveroo, Adobe, TopTool, PayPal. Cool. So let's take a look at getting started. I wish there was an easy way to try this. Well, let's try the, I don't really want, oh, there's a 14 day trial. Okay. Um, let's try signing up with GitHub and seeing what happens. So let me sign in real quick. Okay. So what is it asking for? Act on my, okay. Seems like a lot of, that's okay. All right, let's authorize it. And cool, um, interesting team size number. Of I just wanna kind of take this, this for a spin for myself. So we'll just put one to four hmm. organization. So we'll just do, this is my personal GitHub. You can now add your repository. So let's click on that. So let's try it on one of my recent repositories. So let's do, let's do my personal website. To add this repository, make sure you are a repository admin, hmm. which I am. Interesting. So it's not super clear to me what I originally authorized Codacy for and now Codacy production. So this is a GitHub app. That's a little confusing. Um, again, I only want a specific repository. So we'll do this one and then, oh, I guess I can't. There we go. Just in case that doesn't work, we'll also throw it on this vim for vs code.com. So it wants to read and write access, read access to, why would it want that? Okay. Um, let's take a look. Cool. Okay. So we're back again. Go to JSJOIO. We'll go to Joe Prep. Hmm. That's really weird. Oh, uh, let's try the Vim for V. That's weird on the J Joe Prevet one. It didn't work. I am definitely the admin. <laughs> okay. We'll go to repository. Glad I added both. Okay, so they're gonna prepare it. Okay, so looks like, so we've got this cool dashboard. I like the design. So it's gonna prepare, it's gonna clone it, detecting the language. So this site is a TypeScript Gatsby site. So it's there's not a lot of code in it actually. So this might not be the greatest example, but it's the it's one of the repos that I'm working with right now. So that's why we're kind of taking a look. So detecting the language. So yeah, that should come back. TypeScript, quality metrics, and code patterns. This is pretty interesting. It, you know, it would be cool to kind of see a, like a big open source project that's using this and kind of use that as a way like, hey, look, for example, Gatsby JS is using this. Here's how they're using it. And since it's open source, you could see, for example, like the Codacy maybe dashboard for them or how it's helped them improve the quality. Like 
less of a case study and more like a real world example where it's like, hey, go check out this open source project and here are comments that we've added to their PRs and how it's improved the health of the project. Because I think, you know, for this, like I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm just doing my Vim for VS Code. For uh, the open source project I help maintain at work called Code Server, you know, I don't want to just like add one of these random apps to it. I, Cause then I've got to like talk to my coworkers and explain what it is and then maybe get permission. And so interesting. Okay. So issues 56, 56%. Wow. Dang. Okay. Like I said, this is a small project. So let's take a look. Oh, cool. Okay. So coverage. I wonder if that's code coverage. I'm not sure what this coverage is referring to, but let's take a look. Wow, code style. So let's take a look at what it's complaining about. Unnecessary block. I'm not sure what it means by unnecessary block. Does it mean the spacing or an unnecessary block is present? Such blocks are often used in other languages to introduce a new variable scope. Blocks do not behave like this in ECMAScript and using them can be misleading. I wonder if it means like unused import. I'm not sure. What is this copy? So actually what we'll do, let me just, since I don't have this pulled up locally, we'll just go to this file itself and take a look and see if indeed it's, for example, an, an unused import. So this is in Gatsby node. So we'll go to the repo. I'll hit T to bring up the quick search and we'll just pull up Gatsby node. And so it's complaining about line two. So if I, Grab that and hit Control F. I guess I'll paste that in. Why is that not? Create file path. Okay, so there's two cases of it. So I am using it. So why is it telling me that it's an issue? Um, Unnecessary block. Man, I'm stuck. Okay, we'll skip that one for now. I'm not sure. Maybe that's a, a fluke. Or maybe they know something that I don't know. Unnecessary block. Unnecessary block. Unexpected duplicate name monospace. Interesting. Okay. Reported by style lint. Unexpected duplicate name mono. Oh, that's weird. Why is that? I feel like this is from a starter. Okay. So that's definitely an issue on my side. Cool. That's nice. Expected new line after comma. Okay. I mean, I wonder if you could disable that. Valueless comma new line. After. Okay. So it basically wants that. Oh, interesting. Always or never. All right. Well, so you could change that. I'm not sure how. Ignore disable pattern. Okay. Let's try that. Yeah. I mean, I don't care too much about that. Expected empty line before a comp. I mean, that's not a big deal. So we'll disable that pattern as well. Okay. So that's cool that you can just kind of do that. And I like these notifications they've got. So it's interesting. Okay. So, I mean, most of these are style things. Extraneous new line after. Why is this an issue? Worn when list looseness, looseness is current. Okay, so it's really like, it's almost like a GUI for, for example, ESLint or, or a style. If it can fix it, ignore issue, ignore file. Okay, let's try this. Let's create a comment. Interesting, where, do, where should I put my message? Let's see. Let's just say, hey Joe, fix this. We'll create and let's just see what happens. Repository issues may be disabled. I don't think they're disabled. We'll just create one. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe it's an integration issue. Okay. So that's fine. Let's try and, oh, interesting. I wonder to create comment. Well, I did that before I created an issue. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I need to create an issue. So let's create one. Okay. Now let's try commenting. Maybe, maybe that it needed an issue. Let's just create that. Nope. Okay. I'm not sure. What's... And let's just see if the issue came through. Nice. That's awesome. I love that it's just got all that information, right? It's just like, here's the file, here's the commit, here's the line number. Oh, when it occurred. It would be funny if it uh, showed the author too. You know, then you can blame your coworkers. Hey, you brought this into the code base. Okay, so do not use headings with similar content. Okay, so, you know, interesting. I wonder if it's got a tool to just go fix all these. That would be next. So I don't know if it makes sense to kind of walk you through all these, but you can see there's a lot of issues. So if we go back to the dashboard and let's just kind of see what we're working with. Cool. So yeah, we've got the issues. 
Let's just kind of walk through some of these others. So you can see the commits, files. Oh, that's cool. We've got kind of like a grade. It's like, hey, there's 74 issues in this one. Cool, cool. Issues. Oh, we already looked at that. And then pull requests. Okay, security. Interesting. Oh, let's take a look. At Command injection is an attack in which the goal is an execution of arbitrary commands on the host operating. Interesting, because you're using ESLint. Um, that's kind of cool. Actually, you know, if security's super important to you, then I don't know why, though, it can't check because of ESLint. It'd be nice if they had something here that was like, hey, here's how to fix it, because I have no idea. Okay, code patterns, built-in tools. Oh, you just turn these on. That's kind of cool. Oh, look at this. And all these rules, too. I mean, this is, again, it's kind of like a GUI for, for ESLint and some other tools. I mean... I'd have to go and look for them, but here I can just kind of like toggle them on. Let's see if I, oh, nice on the next and all. Okay. That's cool. So again, you know, it feels like a GUI for, for code styles. Uh, we'll just pop in settings real quick and take a look. Integrations. Oh, display inline. Status checks dis display the quality analysis of change files directly on pull requests. That's kind of cool. I mean, I mean, I don't have any pull requests open. Go back to the dashboard. Cool, so don't see anything about complexity. Let's take a look at sending code. Um, copy the project API token. So, okay, so you can set up test coverage. Okay, I wonder how this work, if this would work with something like Jest, for example. So if I just search Jest, interesting, okay. Um, maybe they don't, okay, we'll, we'll skip that. Let's check out what's community. Maybe they have a Slack or a Discord. Okay, form, awesome. So best practices, help and support. That's kind of cool. Public product roadmap, that's, oh, okay. So, oh, this is the same roadmap that, or the same tool rather. Better pattern management experience, improved flexibility, revamp how we treat code coverage. Cool, and what are they working on? Guide developers, yep, that sounds great. Markdown lint with one click commit fixes. That would be nice. Group patterns by category. Nice, 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 nice. All right, so I think that's mostly it. If I just open up the docs real quick, related to, nice, FAQ, general. All right, so that's Co Codacy, pretty cool tool. I think we can sum it up. It's basically a GUI for analyzing your code base, identifying issues related to style, error, I think it can also do things around complexity, code duplication. It can monitor code coverage. And yeah, it's uh, looks like a great tool if, if you have a big project and you want to enforce a code style, monitor errors. And it looks like they have other things that they'll look into for you, like performance compatibility, unused code, so like dead code. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, so. There's one last feature that I wanted to show, which is called suggested fixes. And it's actually a new feature that's in early access. So this is available on paid plans, which means that you won't have it if you're an open source project. But basically what it does is it provides suggestions for you to quickly apply the changes to improve the code quality of your code base. So you can say, here's an example, Codacy found an issue, strings must use double quote. And then they've added a suggested change. This makes it a lot faster to improve the code quality of your code bases in your repositories. So if you want to upgrade to a paid plan, so if you go in, it's a little confusing. You think that it would be, you know, somewhere here under accounts, but it's not. You have to be in an organization. And once you go there, head over to settings, plan and billing and you'll be able to see if you're on a paid plan or upgrade. So you can see right now I'm on the 14 day trial, which means I have full access to these features. So if we head back, um, I'm trying to think, I'm not sure how add comments. So this is what it does. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, here we go. Activate suggested fix. So enabling the GitHub integration. So head over to your project settings, integrations, so we'll do that, add integration, GitHub. Well, so let's give that a check or I give that a try. So if we head over to settings and then go to integrations. And so we see that we're integrated with GitHub 
and suggested fixes is turned on, which is awesome. So this means that it will suggest fixes using pull request comments. So if we pull up a vim for vs code.com and what we'll do is we'll just create a branch, uh, git checkout dash b test codacy and let's just go into the readme and make a quick change. And so we'll head to the bottom of this, adding a line to readme and we'll save, oops, we'll save that and we'll add it and commit it, push up and we'll create a pull request and let's see. So we'll head over to GitHub, create a pull request. Let's see what happens. Let's see if Codacy comes in and lets us know if there's anything. Well, actually, I guess there probably has to be files. I'm guessing there has to be a file, like if I were to uh, commit a file that has issues. So that would make sense. So actually, if we go back, we'll go to issues and we'll find a file with issues. Um, I don't know, like, like the style.scs. So let's go in there. So cd source, and then we'll vim style CSS. And for example, let's try deleting that, that line and then we'll save it and we'll add that and commit that. And we'll say fix issue in style and we'll push. And if we go back and refresh, okay, maybe not. Maybe that isn't gonna work, so we'll just go back. So basically, you, you get the idea. If, let's say if I added a file, actually we could try that. Let's try doing this. So what we'll do is we'll copy style.scss, which we know has a lot of issues, and we'll say test.css. Now what we'll do is commit that, and we'll push, and since we know the source slash style that SCSS has a bunch of issues and we just copy that file. Hopefully Codacy should let us know that there are issues in that file and then suggest fixes for us. So if we actually go into the check for Codacy, we can click view more details and we can see the logs as it's analyzing, which is kind of cool. And let's see, let's see. And I guess here you can see new issues, fixed issues, etc. Interesting. That's kind of unexpected, found no issues, even though I added that file, you know, which has this, maybe that's kind of strange because you would think that, for instance, if, if it's an issue in style.scss, why is it not an issue in the other? So let's take a look. The logs, let's refresh this, showing one issue with fixed. I guess I thought, oh, well, actually, maybe that's not gonna work because if you look in the fine details, this will only suggest fixes that come from ESLint and these issues. Let's see if we can filter by ESLint. Uh, well, technically, I guess JavaScript. Um, but these aren't really issues, so... Okay, well, anyways, you get the idea. Pretty cool that I can add this. Obviously, if it's going to suggest fixes like this or suggest changes in a PR, all you have to do is hit commit suggestion. So it dramatically improves the speed at which you can review PRs, which is awesome. And I think every developer is gonna want something like that. Um, so yeah, that's it. Go take a look, go check it out, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.